Hey everybody, my name is Jeffrey Way, and this will be the video portion of Canvas from Scratch. So every article written by Rob Hawks, you'll be able to go through it, and then if you need more of a visual understanding, we'll also cover some of the concepts from the article within the companion screencast. So for this one, we'll take our first introductory look at Canvas and learn how to build squares and triangles and stuff like that. So mostly we're going to be focusing on the fundamentals. So the first thing is how can we begin using Canvas and what browsers is it available in? Uh, Canvas is really easy. With HTML5, we have the new Canvas element. So for example, I can say Canvas and we can give it an idea of maybe my Canvas if we need to give one. And you need to also supply a width and a height as well. So we'll say 500 by 300. Within the Canvas tags, this is actually where you would place fallback content for the browsers that do not support it. And that's going to be uh, mostly Internet Explorer 8 and below. Though do keep in mind there are some JavaScript solutions that will provide support for those older browsers. But other than that, uh, Internet Explorer 9, Firefox, Safari, Chrome, pretty much any of the, the current releases of the modern browsers. But if you do want to provide some kind of fallback content, you would place it with, within the Canvas tag, such as Canvas is not supported. Okay, so the first step within our JavaScript, and you would probably place this externally, is to create a reference to the Canvas element. That way you can work with it. So we could say something like var canvas equals document dot get element by ID, and we gave it an ID of my canvas. So now that we have a pointer to that, we can begin working with it. But you don't specifically work with Canvas. In this case, when we're building squares and triangles, we're going to be working with uh, the 2D rendering context. So if we come back to the article and we scroll down, you'll see here, when you use Canvas, you're not drawing on the element itself. Instead, you're actually drawing on the 2D rendering context, which you're accessing through the Canvas element. So let's come back, and now let's access that. And we'll say var, or we can just create a comma, and we'll say context, ctx, name this however you want. And that's going to be equal to the Canvas element, and we're going to call get context, and we're going to get the 2D context. So this now means that the variable contains a reference to the 2D rendering context. So at this point, we can use that to create our rectangles and our squares, etc., etc. So for example, let's, let's begin drawing our first square. Okay, we'll say ctx, and we're going to say fill rect. And this is a method that allows you to create a rectangle or a square. So it's going to accept a handful of parameters. The first one is going to be the x offset, the y offset, and then the width and the height of what you're drawing here. So for example, if we did 50, 50, 100, 100, what we're saying here is that uh, we're going to go 50 pixels from the left, 50 pixels down, and then we want this rectangle to be 100 pixels wide and 100 pixels tall. So what we're doing here is doing x, y, width, height. Okay, so let's save that and go ahead and view this in the browser and see what we come up with. And as you can see right here, 50 pixels from the top and from the bottom, and the width is 100 by 100. So for example, if we were to change this, and we change that to 500, now it's going to be vertically 500 pixels tall. Let's go ahead and undo that. Now, in addition to fill rectangle, you can also do things like stroke rectangle. So for example, let's say uh, ctx dot stroke rectangle. And then again, we're going to pass the exact same values. But this time, rather than filling it, you're going to get a stroke, as you can see right there. So then you can even combine these if you want to. So with that out of the way, why don't we take a look at how to draw paths? Because that's something you could you may use often, is uh, maybe dynamically creating paths. So for example, let's do ctx, and we're going to begin path. And what this method does is it signals that we are going to start a new path. So just like begin path, we're going to have a close path. And this is going to close the path. So for example, it'll take the line and it'll connect the, the closing line with the beginning line to make sure it connects if it doesn't already. Within here, we can begin drawing. So we can say move to, we have line to, you have a handful of different methods that you can use here. So for example, the first one will be move to. And this isn't going to draw anything, but it's going to think of it as a cursor. It's going to move the cursor or, or move the point. So I'll say ctx dot move to 50, 50, and this is x and y. So you're not going to see anything right now because all we've done is we've moved our pointer or our cursor, quote unquote. So now let's do a line. So we'll say move to, and now we're going to do a line to, and this time we'll say 250, uh, 50, 250. So move to 
50 pixels from the left and from the top. And then from that point, we're gonna stay 50 pixels from the left, but go down 200 pixels. So we're gonna stay up there, and then we're gonna go down 200 pixels. Now there's one thing you need to be careful about is if we were to go and refresh this in the browser, you're still not going to see anything. And that's because we've created our strokes and such, but we haven't filled them. We haven't drawn them on the page. So you wanna make sure after you close your path, you call fill. So to give us something to work with, let's do one more and we're gonna say CTX line two. And we're gonna go this time 250, 250. So we're going down 200 pixels and then we're starting at 250. So we started at 50 by 50 and we moved down 200 pixels and now we're moving on the X axis over 250 pixels, but we're staying at the same on the Y. So let's try that and see what we get. And notice that you're getting a triangle right here. So let's, to give you an idea, if we're gonna move to 450, you can see how that affects, because now we're moving on the X axis, 450 pixels. If we were to bring that to 150, you're gonna get more of a rotated. So I'll go ahead and go back just a ways. And now we have our triangle. So as you can see, it's really easy to work with once you learn these methods. And the methods are, are fairly simple to memorize. So I'm going to comment this out so you can use it within the, uh, the downloadable source code. So let's now take a look at changing colors. So let's go ahead and fill a rectangle. And we'll say CTX, fill rect. And again, we need to pass in some values. So we'll do the same as we did before like so, and notice that the default is black for uh, the, the fill style. But you can change that if you want. You can say CTX fill style, and you can either pass in RBG or even uh, a color. So let's just do red. And notice how that's not showing up, and the reason is you're setting the fill style below fill rectangle. So why don't we go and pull that up, and now you can see that that does take effect. But even within here, I can change it to RGB if I want. And if we want it to be blue, we'll do zero red, zero green, but all blue, and now that's blue. So you have your choice there. Now again, remember, just like with fill rect, you can change that to stroke rect. So I can do stroke rect. And now you can see that we have that rectangle. Now notice though that it's still black, right? And that's because we're using a fill style, but we're not filling the rectangle. So you would wanna change this to stroke style. And now you can see that the blue is showing up there. Now we can change a handful more things here, like we can, we can set the stroke width or the line width. So I can say CTX dot line width and set that to say 20. And now the stroke width is going to be 20 pixels. So if we were to set that to 100, you can see how that works. One, two. Now again, we can use this line width for say our triangle. So let's Go ahead and uncomment that out, and at the very top we could say ctx dot line width equals 10, and then let's come down and rather than fill, this we'll call the stroke method. Okay, and now that's taking effect. So notice when you are working with strokes, you need to make sure you use the respective methods, so stroke instead of fill. Okay, and the last thing we're going to work on in this lesson is how to uh, clear a rectangle. Okay, and very easy to remember, you use the clear rect method. So let's go down here, the very bottom, and I'm simply gonna call ctx.clearRect. So within here, I can pass in the parameters of what I want to clear. So in this case, if I wanted to say uh, 50, 50, 250, 250, that's going to delete everything within those parameters. Now, if you do not know the dimensions of your canvas, you can, of course, also use canvas.width and canvas.height. So, for example, canvas.width and pass in canvas.height. Now, you're going to get the same thing, and that's because I am using uh, this right here. So, why don't we go ahead and change this from 0 to 0. And then I'll get rid of it entirely, or you can just get rid of small portions as I went over before. Okay, so that's been the companion to this first introductory article. We've admittedly not done much. All we've done is created the squares and learned some methods and how to actually draw lines. But in the future lessons, I can promise you Rob's going to go into a lot more detail, and the companion videos should help you along with that. So let us know if you have any questions, and otherwise, stay tuned to NetTouch for part two. Bye.